The spotlight was on BC's premier today in Prince George. Christy Clark was the keynote speaker at the annual Natural Resources Forum. We also had a chance to interview her face-to-face -face in studio this afternoon about some of the issues facing our region and our province as a whole. I'd like to welcome Premier Christy Clark to the CKPG studio. We're really happy to have you here today. And of course, you were at the Natural Resources Conference. The spotlight of late has been on the energy industry as a whole, and I'd like to talk about that first. With falling oil prices, how do you think that will impact BC's budget? I think we're going to be okay. I mean, we are determined to balance our budget. This will be our third consecutive balanced budget. We may be the only country in the province, in the in the province in the country that balances this year, and that's a mark of our determination. But it is also, though, um, I guess, reflective of the flat fact that we have worked so hard to create a very diverse economy that isn't dependent on just one resource and create diverse markets so we don't just have one customer. And that's meant that we have been much better protected than provinces like Alberta and Saskatchewan and to some extent Ontario have been. If there is an impact, where can we expect services to be cut first? Well, I, you know, I don't think you're going to see that impact. We have worked really hard to make sure that government stays small. And so, um, you know, that's meant lots of tough decisions over the last few years, but I think British Columbians are with us on that. People don't want bigger government. They don't want more expensive government. People would rather, I think, uh, have us leave the tax money in their pockets than take more away. So I think we're in pretty good shape. We'll run a surplus this year. And as I said, it'll be our third consecutive balanced budget. I think we, as a province, can stand pretty proud. Changing direction now, where are the infrastructure improvements in northern BC? We've seen a lot of money put into the south on transit, and yet we haven't seen the doubling of Highway 16 West, and this is a highway where we see people killed every year. Yes, it is, a, and Highway 16 is a major preoccupation for us, the improvements there. Um, we have asked the federal government, I've, I've joined with Jim Prentice from Alberta, Brad Wall from Saskatchewan, and we've jointly asked the federal government for $1.5 billion that we will match to improve roads in particular like Highway 16 and Highway 1. That's important for market access, so it grows the economy, good for jobs, but it's good for safety too. So we are, it's a big preoccupation for us, and I'm hopeful that, you know, maybe not this year, but in the coming years, as the oil prices improve and the federal budget improves, that we are going to get a positive response there. All right. Turning to an issue now that's also a very serious one here in the north, some community leaders here have criticized your government for what they say is a lack of action on missing women, in particular the lack of transportation options along Highway 16. What more work does your government plan to do on this? We have more work to do and um, we're going to continue, we're going to continue doing that work and I, we'll be in a better position to talk about it once we finished it. It's a complicated problem uh, for very small populations of people creating regular transit access is hard anywhere in the world. Um, but you know, we took, it was our government that appointed Wally Opal to go look into the problem and we expanded his mandate to include Highway 16 and we've taken all of his recommendations very seriously. We have a lot more to do, but you know, ultimately the big the big picture solution for First Nations women and communities is economic growth. We've got to find a way to grow the resource sector and then we've got to find a, a way to share those resources better and more appropriately, more fairly with First Nations communities. That's how when they're lifted, you know, when they have a chance to live within the kind of wealthy communities that other people do, they won't face the same kind of problems I think that they do today. A lot of it's born of poverty. Is that an issue, do you think, could be looked at through a federal inquiry? It is, absolutely. I've, you know, I really believe this is not something that lends itself to a case-by-case -case look. We need to look at it as a systemic problem and recognize, you know, we've done our own inquiry here, and what we learned is that it, there are big systemic issues that need to be addressed. So I've joined in calling on the federal government to have an inquiry and have a really thorough look at it because, you know, all of those women, um, it, they have children and they have parents and communities who love them, who've lost them. And, you know, if we've lost them, we should at least be able to give some comfort to those of us who are still living that we're going to try and stop it from happening to other people. Madam Premier, is there anything else you'd like to tell our audience? Well, I think, um, you know, Shirley Bond and Mike Morris are doing an incredible job on behalf of this community. I think you certainly know that when you look around and you see how much the place has changed. 
17 and a half percent unemployment in 1999, 4.4 percent unemployment today. It's a great picture. I mean, Prince George is a product of so many big hearts and so much entrepreneurial goodwill from people. This is the example, I think, for the rest of the country for success and how if you, if you decide you want to be successful and you invest in the things that you need to, if you support a resource economy, you can do well. And that Prince George is a real, I think, a beacon of, of optimism for all of us. It's great. Well, thanks for joining us. Premier Christy Clark. Thank you.